Meanwhile, in the United States, it was a night like no other. The grand finale of the Republican National Convention was, for the lack of a better word, a blockbuster. The spectacle at the White House was unprecedented and unconventional. This four-day event was Trump's biggest opportunity to frame the presidential race on his terms. And he may have succeeded and exceeded the expectations of most people. The Trump family put up a show that was made for television. It had emotion, fireworks, big promises, some acknowledgments. And in the words of Donald Trump himself, a lot of greatness. Let's get you the big takeaways. Number one, Donald Trump wanted a big party and he had it. Pandemic or no pandemic, the president did not allow the Wuhan virus to deny him the crowd that he craved for. The South Lawn of the White House was packed with over 1,000 people. There were no masks. America still remains a worst hit country, but social distancing could apparently wait. It's the land of the free after all. Number two, Donald Trump used the White House as a backdrop for an overtly political activity, delivering a convention, convention speech at the president's official address is unconventional, to put it mildly. The Democrats say he broke a few laws by doing so, but the president could not care less. He promised a show and he delivered it. And who was the showstopper besides the commander-in-chief, of course? It was the daughter-in-chief, Ivanka Trump. She got a starring role at this convention, much like she has throughout the Trump presidency. Ivanka Trump introduced her father before his acceptance speech, and she began by acknowledging that her father's style may not be to everyone's liking. My father has strong convictions. He knows what he believes, and he says what he thinks. Whether you agree with him or not, you always know where he stands. I recognize that my dad's communication style is not to everyone's taste, and I know that his tweets can feel a bit unfiltered. But the results, the results speak for themselves. Unfiltered. The results speak for themselves. I have to agree they do. Which results is Ivanka Trump referring to here? Mostly Donald Trump's foreign policy victories, as she puts it. I heard foreign leaders beg him not to move the American embassy to Jerusalem, yet he delivered on a promise also made and unfulfilled by past presidents because my father knew that it was the right thing to do. Yeah. Defying all expectations, just weeks ago, he rewrote history again by making a peace agreement in the Middle East, the biggest breakthrough in a quarter century. And then came the big surprise, an acknowledgement of the Wuhan virus crisis in America. Much like Melania Trump, Ivanka addressed the invisible enemy America is fighting and the pain in the eyes of a father every time he hears about new casualties. You have to listen to this. I've been with my father and I've seen the pain in his eyes when he receives updates on the lives that have been stolen by this plague. I have witnessed him make some of the most difficult decisions of his life. I sat with him in the Oval Office as he stopped travel to Europe. I watched him take the strongest, most inclusive economy in a lifetime, the lowest unemployment in a half century, and the highest wage increase for working families in decades, and close it down to save American lives. After this rather moving speech, it was time for the president to take the stage. He made a grand entrance to the song, God Bless the USA. What followed next was not so grand, though. It was mostly Trump and his teleprompter. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Friends, delegates, and distinguished guests, please. I stand before you tonight honored by your support, proud of the extraordinary progress we have made together over the last four incredible years, and brimming with confidence in the bright future we will build for America over the next four years. And then Trump gave a preview of what to expect in the next nine weeks, an absolute assault on Joe Biden. Trump said that Biden's agenda was made in China. He called Biden weak and a Trojan horse for socialism.
a man who takes his orders from liberal hypocrites who are driving cities to the ground and tearing down the country. His words. Take a look. Joe Biden is weak. He takes his marching orders from liberal hypocrites who drive their cities into the ground while fleeing far from the scene of the wreckage. These same liberals want to eliminate school choice while they enroll their children in the finest private schools in the land. At the Democrat National Convention, Joe Biden and his party repeatedly assailed America as a land of racial, economic, and social injustice. So tonight, I ask you a simple question. How can the Democrat Party ask to lead our country when it spends so much time tearing down our country. And then the U.S. president concluded with a promise that doesn't get old, no matter how many times he says this. Trump promised to make America safe, strong, proud, and great once again. Together we are unbeatable because together we are the proud citizens of the United States of America. And on November 3rd, we will make America safer. We will make America stronger. We will make America prouder. And we will make America greater than ever before. I am very, very proud to be the nominee of the Republican Party. I love you all. God bless you and God bless America. Thank you very much. This message did not resonate well outside the White House. As Trump delivered his acceptance speech, anti Trump protesters had gathered by the thousands, armed with horns and whistles, hoping that their cacophony would disrupt the president's speech, and it did. The noise was occasionally audible on the live broadcast. But it wasn't long before their voice got lost in the sound of fireworks. It was quite a sight. Fireworks in the sky, fury on the streets. So that's how the Republican National Convention ended. What Donald Trump said was not new. What the others said was not new either. But they wrapped their words in grand packages designed to impress his supporters enough to provoke his enemies. Donald Trump has managed to blur the lines between political campaigning and the presidential office. Washington has not changed Donald Trump. Donald Trump has changed Washington. Unfortunately for Team Trump, the moment that has really gone viral from the convention is First Lady Melania Trump rolling her eyes at First Daughter Ivanka Trump. We thought we'd leave it out because this has nothing to do with the election. But on second thoughts, we decided it makes an interesting metaphor. This could be America after listening to its presidential candidates.